So good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Chloe Eisencott. I'm a researcher uh, not here, but at Mines Paris Tech, and actually in a computational biology lab, uh, which is joint between uh, so Mines and uh, Institut Curie, which is a cancer research uh, institute. So what we do is process large amounts of data to try to make some sense of it uh, to help biologists, clinicians, doctors uh, cure cancer. Uh, so we'll get more opportunities to give you some examples about this. The TAs for your course are sitting in the back over there. So they are Eugene and Jai Ken, whose name I am uh, butchering. Uh, so they will be in charge of the labs and they will be helping you out with your projects. Um, so you will find all the course materials uh, on my uh, personal webpage. Um, and there's also a textbook if you want to go <coughs> more in depth or if you have questions that aren't answered by the slides or by my lecture. Uh, it's freely available online. It's called The Elements of Statistical Learning. It's one of the major machine learning textbooks. Uh, it's probably also in your campus library if you prefer physical books. Um, yeah, don't hesitate to interrupt me for questions while I'm lecturing and to email me uh, questions uh, during the week. Uh, so you won't, if you want to meet with me, uh, you'll have to schedule something before or after class because I don't work here, so I only come here for those lectures. Uh, but that's also possible. Um, okay, so what we're going to do today, uh, so the first part, so first uh, hour and a half, uh, we're going to dwell a bit in the topic of machine learning and uh, then um, have some more practical information about what we're going to do uh, throughout uh, this course. We'll try to see if anybody has ideas about what machine learning is, or what learning is, or what you think this class is about, why you're sitting here. So what's machine learning? What's learning? What's learning for a student? What's learning for a kid who's growing up? OK, so this kind of sums it up, actually. One definition I like a lot about learning, because it applies to human beings and dogs and machines is, mod is that learning is modifying a behavior based on experience. So you experience something and you yourself change based on that experience. So maybe you experience <laughs> sitting in a lecture and receiving information about a topic and you come out of this lecture hopefully more knowledgeable <coughs> about said topic or with some insights about how horrible your teacher was and what you should never do if you were to teach a class yourself. Um, and that's also what we're trying to do with machines. So as someone said over there, we're gathering data and we're trying to build something from this data to build a model, update a model, and make predictions about the future. Um, so uh, more maybe a more uh, specific uh, definition is to see machine learning as programming computers to optimize some sort of criterion based on examples, that is to say, data. Uh, so this has, this has to be differentiated from a lot of operations that uh, computers do where, where you've told them what to do specifically with this data to get the outcome you want. So what I mean by that is, for instance, uh, if you want to calculate payroll, how much you should pay your employees based on their wages and well, their ra uh, salary rate and the number of hours they worked this week, uh, you don't need learning for that. You just need to code <coughs> the mathematical operation that gives you the results. So the kind of context or situations in which we need learning are those uh, situations here. So the one I'm interested in in the most is when human expertise doesn't exist. So that's what very frequently happens in bioinformatics. We're trying to learn which gene is responsible for which particular type of cancer. 
Why well, humans don't know which gene is responsible for a particular kind of cancer. So can we teach a computer to learn this better than we can? Um, there's also lots of in very interesting situations in which humans can do a task, but they don't really know how they do it. So, for example, speech recognition. You understand uh, what I'm saying, hopefully, uh, but you can't explain to someone else or to a computer how to process the sounds that I'm making and turn them into meaning. Uh, the same thing with computer vision. You know perfectly well when you see a cat that it is a cat, but people are pouring millions of dollars into identifying cat pictures on the internet. Um, there's also uh, the case where the solution changes in time. So that's uh, what you do a lot in telecommunication applications. Uh, so think of routing in computer networks. Uh, you have an idea of how to do this, uh, maybe at a given point in time, but then you have servers that go down, servers that go up, computers that go down, computers that go up, and you have to constantly update your solution to the routing problem to know uh, how to uh, transfer packages of information from computer A to computer B. Um, and then, this is actually sort of uh, what we're doing, not only in biometrics, but in all those cases, is you need to adapt to new cases. So <coughs> now you know uh, how to recognize all the cat pictures you've seen before, but now you ha you're presented with a new cat picture uh, or a new picture of an animal, uh, and you need to <coughs> be able to classify this new picture as a cat or non-cat, uh, whereas you've never seen that picture before. Uh, so the example in biometrics is identifying people based on their fingerprints or iris uh, or DNA or whatever. You need a solution that's robust to whenever you have a new person and a new fingerprint, a new iris, whatever. Uh, your solution needs to be able to uh, make use of that information. There's a lot of vocabulary around machine learning. Uh, so you're here as part of a data science course, but machine learning can also be seen as part of uh, artificial intelligence, so AI. So why? Because if you want to make a system that's able to live and evolve uh, in a changing environment, you need adapti adaptation to this new environment, and for this, you need learning, because you cannot foresee all the possible situations um, and hard code them into your robot, say. Uh, so there's too many variables in the real world for them, for you to hard code what's supposed to happen. Um, and based on this idea of adapting to a changing environment, a key concept in machine learning is generalization. <coughs> so meaning, uh, rather than having hard coded as a solution to all possible problems, you need to be able to uh, build, to find the solution to a new problem based on the solutions you know to previous problems. And this is what we're going to try to do during this course. Okay, so I'm re-emphasizing re things we've said already. Learning is based on data. Uh, so data in the general case is cheap and abundant. Uh, that is not true in bioinformatics, but that's true in many examples such as computer vision. Uh, there's lots of pictures of cats in the internet. Um, and knowledge is much harder to come by. The knowledge of how you know for sure that a cat is a cat and not a dog and not a picture of a cat or a painting of a cat or a lion is much harder to uh, encode for, and formulate. Um, so based on this idea that data is widely available and cheap and knowledge is uh, scarce and expensive, uh, our idea is to build models that are good approximations of this data. More specifically, good and useful approximation, approximations to the data. By useful, I mean that we need those approximations to explain the data we know, we have seen uh, very well, but we also need 
um, these approximations, these models, to be able to explain data that we will see so that we can then uh, assign a label to them or so again, if we see a new picture, can we identify whether it's a cat or not? Um, so an example about uh, data being cheap and abundant and knowledge being scarce uh, is if you go to Amazon, for instance, uh, and you click on one item, based, they have a lot of data about all the items that have been purchased uh, together with this item you've clicked on, and based on that, they're able to make suggestions to you. So for instance, if you click to go and buy a Game of Thrones, they're going to suggest that you buy Lord of the Rings. Uh, which actually you probably could have forecasted, uh, which means that there's some knowledge uh, that we have about those things, but uh, it, Amazon suggestions get interesting when you buy things about machine learning for work and things for language learning because you're interested in that and things about your hobbies or your fiction you're interested in and then it mixes all these things together and it comes up with really weird suggestions. Anyway, um, so yeah, our goal here is to use data to build models about it so that we can make predictions about new data that we haven't seen before. I've given examples about retail and about cats and about cancer. Uh, these uh, ideas uh, of mining data, so extracting information from data that is available to us uh, to make predictions is used in many, many, many domains, uh, which is why there's an entire data science course here. Uh, it's because you can apply the same techniques and ideas and knowledge uh, to a whole bunch of things. So we've talked about market basket analysis a bit, actually. So market <coughs> basket analysis is the thing that tells you that people who buy hamburgers are likely to buy beer. And from this on, you can either use this information to uh, put the beer as far as possible from the hamburgers in the supermarket to make sure that people go through the entire supermarket and see all sorts of other products they might not have thought of purchasing <laughs> before, uh, or to make promotional offers about get some beer for free if you buy some hamburgers, or those kind of things that people do in marketing. Uh, and similarly, customer relationships management, which is about identifying groups of custom customers uh, that are behaving similarly, so they have similar tastes. Uh, so you might want to target a promotional offer at them. You might also see a new market that's emerging, uh, new customers, group of customers that are going to be more uh, receptive to a new product you have to offer to them, uh, those kinds of analyzers. Um, in finance, um, machine learning can be used for credit scoring, uh, so, which is particularly important in the US. Uh, so, you know, <coughs> deciding based on your <coughs> financial history and your job and your wages and the cost of your house and how much you're spending and those kind of things, whether it's a good idea or not to lend you some money and how much. Uh, also, well, it's also used in uh, all sorts of markets, analyzes and predictions, in trading, and in fraud detection. Uh, so can you detect abnormal behaviors in the data that tells you, haha, something weird happened here. This <coughs> is worth investigating. Uh, in factories, uh, you can use machine learning to control and op optimize your uh, manufacturing processes and for troubleshooting. So <coughs> detecting abnormal behaviors uh, and uh, detecting that everything is going well on your factory line uh, without human intervention. So in medicine, it's more and more used to do medical diagnosis. Uh, so this will bring us to uh, the question of uh, interpretability of models. Uh, doctors, well, people in general, and doctors in particular, uh, aren't very keen on predicting that uh, <coughs> you have this particular subtype of cancer or that you should be given this particular drug uh, based on the black box that tells them uh, this is 
what this patient has. Uh, what they want is also to understand why the black box is making those predictions. So that's, uh, so for instance, uh, when Facebook is suggesting a new friend to you, uh, they don't really care how their black box made that prediction. Uh, in the worst case, you don't know that person, you don't add that person as a friend, and no harm done. In medicine, that's a bit different. So people want more confidence that the model is doing the right thing. Um, so I've talked about uh, network optimization in telecommunications. Again, in the same way that you can detect fraud or malfunctioning factor lines, you can try to detect uh, intrusions on uh, computer networks, security frauds, and spam. Um, we'll talk about spam at some point. And then, well, I've talked about bioinformatics. Uh, so <coughs> machine learning in biology is mostly used to analyze genetics data uh, because that's very big data sets, at least in one dimension, because there's, well, DNA is very big, very long. So you have lots of places on the DNA and lots of things that, I, that can happen there. And just looking at the data uh, from a human perspective doesn't make sense at all. So we need uh, algorithms to make sense of it. It's used in drug predictions to match uh, potential drugs and uh, proteins they're targeting. It's used also in astronomy where you have lots of very blurry images of space and you're trying to figure out if one of the blurry spots is a star or a planet or something interesting or just a blurry spot and where it is exactly. Uh, it's used in physics, uh, so in, uh, I don't really understand what they do at CERN, but they use a lot of machine learning. And of course, I've talked about Facebook a minute ago. Uh, it's widely used on the web for search engines, so that's how Google makes suggestions to you. So that's also how uh, social networking works a lot, so how uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, <coughs> Facebook, whatever, makes suggestions to you about content you might be interested in seeing, people you might, might be interested in connecting to, uh, and those kind of things. So we've said already that machine learning was about optimizing some sort of criterion to make <coughs> your model fit the data. This means that we're going to need two key ingredients. One of them is statistics to build models and uh, go from having new data to updating the model based on this data, which is called statistical inference. And the other thing we're going to need is computer science uh, because we're going to have lots of data. We're not going to <coughs> do statistics by hand on them. We're going to need to implement things in computers. We're going to need those things to be fast, to be efficient, to be able to work on very large databases. Uh, and we're also going to need to evaluate those models. Uh, which is going to require some more algorithmics. That's what we're going to do, bits of statistics, bits of computer science, get more hands-on computer <coughs> science during the lab sessions, uh, more statistics during the lectures. If you're feeling a bit uh, fuzzy about your statistics, uh, there's uh, this very nice uh, appendix in the textbook which is probably Appendix A, which is about some background in probabilities and statistics uh, that you might want to skim over uh, before uh, if you feel that some concepts escape you. Also, don't hesitate to